this I'm sitting down to mix my paint colors for um, my latest project. I, um, I couldn't find a blue in the line that was what the blue that I wanted. I had to mix and so I figured I'd just start out with white plus a little touch of the darker blues. So we have ultramarine blue up here, we have um, ultra blue deep here, we have primary blue here, and then I went down here and did some, um, oh and this is blue violet right here. But it's interesting how all of these paint colors are so entirely different. So this one would be the bluest, and then in these, even though that just looks like just blue blue, and so does this, when you paint these chips, I went ahead and painted chips of these, when you paint these chips and you put it next to these chips, you can see that these two are so green compared to these two. Okay, and then this is the blue violet plus the white, and you can see that that is way more purple. Okay, so it's a really fascinating um, journey to take. If you just take your darkest colors and just mix them with some white, you'll be able to see what their underlying colors are. And so in this case, I knew I wanted something in a blue-blue. And um, these two, one is cool white and one is warm white. <clears throat> but now I know that these, the ultra blue deep and the primary blue, belong into the blue-green family. And it was real fun, interesting. Here's my deco art book filled with my paint chips. And I have them arranged by color families, but I have ultramarine blue over here, primary blue over here. Uh, ultramarine belongs over here. Ultra blue deep and primary over there. But when you hold up these color chips next to some of these color families, you see that this turquoise blue is definitely part of the family here. And so I find that just really, really interesting that this this Victorian blue kind of has the same little color family going on. So my chips need to move over here and I need to kind of rearrange my book a little bit now that I've discovered this little tidbit. We're going to start out this project. We're going to use ultramarine blue and cool white and we're going to mix our blue background color because there was no good um, background color. I'm just taking like a little chocolate chip size on my palette knife and I've got a puddle here mm, what's that about two inches by two inches of white and I'm going to mix that in you have to really thoroughly mix it I prefer a palette knife that has some flex to it because you can push blend instead of only mixing blending so you want to push 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 we want to get this to about a value nine which is just one shade darker than white we don't want it to be really a dark color. Okay, pick up another chocolate chip. If you mix just a little bit at a time, then you won't end up with a big pile of mud that you have to adjust. Okay, I got a little ways to go here. So I'll pick up another chocolate chip. Okay, you can see it darkening up. You want to mix enough to get your um, background base coated. Otherwise, you'd be mixing again. I'm thinking one more chocolate chip ought to do us. Whoops, a chocolate chip with a drizzle. That sounds tasty. Okay, there we go. I'm thinking that'll do us. I've got my paint chips over here. I'm thinking when that dries, it'll probably be pretty close. And now we'll roll on our background color. Okay, on canvas we always want to roll on our background. Okay, and I put some paper on my um, table so that I don't make a mess. Well, I've already made a mess on the tablecloth, so that's just so I can change it and quit looking like a pig every week when I, or every time I do a new project. Okay, just get it nice and rolled. You can save this roller if you make a mistake or something. Keep your hair out of the... Rolling it on gets it into all those little grooves and creases and stuff, and it just does a fast, nice job of base coating. So I always roll on when I can. Okay, I think that's good. Just one coat covered. If any little white shows through or so close to the value of white, it won't matter anyway. Now you might want to mix up a patch 
a batch of this or mix up a double batch so that you have some to patch if you make a mistake or something like that. So the large shamrock is based in, or you're going to mix these, it's based in leaf green plus olive green one to one. So you mix that together and base coat that. Um, it might take a couple coats. The medium green, all of these guys right here, are made with festive green plus olive green, one to one. And then to make this light green, you're going to take some of your medium green out and you're going to mix it with cool white, one to one. So you'll have one part of your medium green and one part of cool white. That's the amount of coins is true ochre. And then the coins are based with true ochre on the side and um, golden straw on the tops. So, um, this area down here, when you're basing your, um, your cauldron of money, is um, mixed with the dark green and the gooseberry so that it makes a more muted green. And I'm basing over, um, I had it in a purpley shade, which I've decided since I didn't like, it wasn't working. So I'm um, basing over that, but we still want to mute this bottom area like we do with the purple. Use our compass and we're going to just make a line just inside of that um, stitch line. What I want to do is incorporate the stitch line in a taped border. Just run it all along. Okay, whoops, and not all the way up to the top. And then you'll widen it just a little bit. Whoops, and go outside of there, widen, widen, just to give ourselves a nice, oh, maybe an eighth inch band. Ooh, hello. I taped off my border here, and I'm going to use a little makeup applicator. I have this based in a blue color, and I really didn't like it, so I'm changing the color to the dark green mix. Tap on just a little bit of it. Just rub that right on. And thankfully, you won't have to cover up your blue. Yeah, I like that much better. Okay, and then you continue all the way around, and we're going to add a little check to this. So we're going to use a little number four brush and our light green mix. And we're just going to go slide, slide with a little check going all the way around. The thing we're going to do is we're going to tape our oval that we've got on here. And we're going to give it a little pinstripe of an effect. So I'm going to tape to the outside. And as you pull this, you're going to stretch it. You're just going to follow your pencil line. It's much easier if you have a little pencil line there to follow it. It comes out much smoother. Peel it up if you make a mistake. Okay, and then bend it out when you need to connect up to the, okay, and then you just meet it as you come over the top, bend that one out, and I'm off my track just a little bit. However, I'm just going to ease that on there. Really pull it when you're going to go tight. Okay, pull, 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 pull. Pull, pull, pull. You get any square corners, you're going to have to take it off and do it again. But I'll tell you what, there's nothing worse, I don't think, than having to pull an oval or a circle line. I would much rather draw it on and then tape it so that it comes out perfect. Bend that out. Go. Now do I like that? And do we get a little square up here? I think so. Yeah. I've got a little peak up there. I think I'm going to be happy with that. We got all this lettering and stuff like that to go over it. So now we'll do the inside. This one will need to be nice and. Hello, start at the end of my tape. Silly. Really just get in there and see how wide your tape line is, eyeball that. 
you're not gonna take you're not gonna paint over this money so it's a good place to stop right there just make sure that your lines are straight whoops hello went the wrong way okay so we'll go back to the money back to the money twist that off there we go that gives me a chance to restart Take our gold and just tap that on. Stay off of your money. I'm using the corner of my makeup applicator. Just tapping that on. So it's not so base coaty. I'm going in between the um, golden straw and the true ochre. A little mix. Home stretch. Stay off your leprechaun, your shamrocks. Okay, and then peel that tape. You always want to peel your tape right away. It's interesting, this tape, because it's stretching around that corner, makes the canvas buckle a little bit. It's going to feel great when it gets released here. There we go. Now we have a perfectly oval line. Okay, like a silly girl, I want to float on the outside of all these elements. So I am going to use a mop. And I'm going to tell you, and put this when I edit this, I'll put this at the front of the video. So when we put the tape on, I'll say go ahead and shade this. But I'm doing it after because I always design these right on camera. And then I'll just mop it. So if you ever have a mistake like that, now you know how to handle that. I don't want it as well. Now this, I don't think you can do before. So you just have to do it and run through it a little bit. Don't want any square corners though, so make sure you do mop. It just tints that whole outer area. if your mop or your brush is facing the right direction. Okay. There we go. And then mop, mop, mop. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking gooseberry and we're just making these little semicircles. And they're evenly spaced and they're flat on the bottom following that golden arch. Okay. Just have them go around and then the heads are made with um, a mix of black and white. Black and the cool white. And then black dots. We're going to shade their little rumps with, um, and we'll walk through this with cadmium red. Again, over the top of it. I'm going to shade this back side with our cadmium red. A little bit stronger than that turned out. I don't want it to steal the thunder, but I do want it to be visible. Make our little flower trim by using our um, gooseberry pink, and we want to leave about a fingerprint in between. Just make your little circles. We'll shade these in a little while. Leave room for your leaves. So that's maybe two fingers between each one. Make the circle fairly large. You know, not so large, but... Okay, and so then we'll take our leaves. Ignore my little lines right here. I've, uh, we're going to use our dark green mix. And we'll just take a little kind of a comma stroke. 
leaf off of that. It's like a moustache white and use fresh paint when you're doing big when you're doing dots because then they won't end up with those little crusty tips on them and my paint was definitely it's cold out right now so I have the heater on and so my paint's crusting over okay and so the dot of golden straw between on the dark checks the centers of the flowers just make a little tiny C stroke dot right in the middle, kind of. A little C strokey. Okay, get all the centers. And then take your liner brush and go into Golden Straw. And then just dot that middle of that flower. Still dog sitting with the squeaky toy. Sorry about the squeaky toy. All right, so we're gonna just float right next to that green edge. With pure, and try not to go over your wet dots. It's a real tricky thing to know when they're all dry. And this lovely toy is squeaky. And it's Ace's favorite toy. So I toss it. And he kills it and then he brings it back and that's all the noise you guys keep hearing in the background okay we're gonna float on either side so where our coins um, our coins edges of money we want to just go ahead and shade under some things yeah make make some things be round and some things be ovals and just give it some roundy loosey shapes and then we'll highlight the coins on top of there and that'll just give us the impression that we have some coins in that pot and then we'll shade all the way along this rim And our upper coins, we want to just C stroke on the sides. And that's with true ochre. Straw. And highlight. Just some little C strokes here and there. And that'll make us look like we have coins. Start highlighting our shamrocks. I'm going to use my crescent um, dome, my crescent stencil brush. I'm going to get into some of my medium value green, which I have none left of. And we are going to just start rubbing on lovely little accents. This is so much easier than trying to float in a circle. Um, I do have to stop and make some. Okay, so up our paint on a dry brush, keeping it towards the top, towards the tips of those shamrocks. You don't want to make them polka dots or anything like that. You just want to make it a nice rounded shadow. And join it in the middle. Reload as you need to. And sometimes stippling works a little bit better. combination of both and you got to choose one or the other to um, to be the brightest so I think I'm going to choose up here at the top I'm going to go into my next lightest color which is just straight I'm going to use just straight um, olive green and then because it's a little bit damp I'm going to go ahead and just stipple it Then the highlight that we did. Okay, see how that's just becoming the brightest. Brush off any little furs and things like that that you have. 
Okay, now we'll go into the lightest highlight color, the lightest green color, which would be our base coat for these guys. Rub it off. I'm just dirty brushing into it. And then, whoopsie, a little strong. Didn't dirty brush dry it off enough. I can make that better. Okay. Keep this more muted down here. Got these guys all about even. Now I think I'm going to go with that light green color up here and just give that just a little bit more of the highlight. Just that much more. Maybe a touch of that on the other. Sure marks not very much. I really like that kind of raised look that they have. Okay, now I'm going to go dirty brush into, whoops, <laughs> a ton of taffy. Yikes, that's really a dirty brush. I'm going to wipe that brush off a lot because I just barfed taffy all over my brush. And then choose our lights. I wiped off so much. Those, those final brighter highlights. We share the love just a little bit here with these. Okay, they're getting a kind of a puff look now, which is what I like about these. Notice that these shamrocks are all a series of hearts, which I, you know, if you love St. Patrick's Day, then that's perfect. Okay, so now dirty brush into more of the taffy and we'll highlight those light ones. We're going to shade these guys straight on in to the centers. For this big guy right here, I'm using straight, um, straight leaf green. And we're also going to shade with leaf green around the edges of these. And there'll be a big C stroke right there. Starting to feel a little bit more St. Patrick's y now, I think. Let's drag that all the way in. You don't want to make it look like you went brr, 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 all the way around. Now we want to pull a little sideways float into the middles. I'm still using the same color green. Okay, we're also going to want a shade coming out of here on our stem on one side. Make sure that joins. If it doesn't join, make it join. For the medium ones, we're going to shade with the base coat color for the dark one. I'm going to shade in all the same spots. C stroke, come across, bring it down on the chisel. Nice and graceful. Okay, here we go. Lightest ones. Same treatment. We're going to use the base coat color for these middle ones, which is the middle green. Try and keep your float clean. Mine is looking pretty lame. We really don't want these little ones over here to take all the attention and stuff away. Add some little hash marks on the sides of the coins. Okay, and then a little bit of a line work to intimate cauldron of money with what is the color? With berry red. Nice big float if you need to walk it out. Float with a great big giant oval wash brush. And get it wet, not too wet. We don't want water floating and floating everywhere. And we're going to use the ultra ultramarine blue. And we're going to make a very nice, lovely, soft float. And then we're going to tuck it into our corners here, right next to the band. 
walk it out a little bit and then smooth that out all along our edges. We'll kiss the tips of these shamrocks with just a little float of a little float of the berry red just to kind of spread that love around. We can bring just a little bit of it down here. Now what I'm going to do is I've got my rake brush loaded with um, water and thinned cool white. I'm smashing it open, blotting it on a paper towel. And then I'm going to make these crisscross lines in through our elements. And then we'll go crisscross the other way. Just kind of more towards the center, fading out as you get to the outer edges. It can be in between. You want to keep them going in the same direction. On our happy word, we're going to do all the left. Is that left? Yeah, that's left side. All the left sides with our, what color is it? Leaf green. I've got all these scrolly things to do too, so pay attention to those. And we'll go under. Keep up on your tippy toe. Okay, this is just going to accent that color. Okay, so on the St. Patty's Day, we're going to do the same thing all on the left sides, and but we're going to use the black forest green. We'll go under. On this outside area over here, we're going to take the end of a brush and we're going to make polka dots out of cool white. And a little bit more, so I'm doing a little C stroke around each of the white polka dots with the ultramarine blue. And this needs to be a nice clean float, it can't be messy at all. 